What is up, guys? Hope you're all doing well out there today. JD here. I have another knife mod video for you guys. Today, I'm going to be taking my brass Civivi Elementum with the coated D2 steel. Oh, I just still love how they just put that little touch of gold down there to kind of draw out the little bit of hints of brass that you can see coming through. Mm, really, really like that. So, I wanted to do a knife mod because as you can see the freaking <laughs> the handles are actually heavier than the knife even though the action is really crisp because it is on bearings but i can tell you i'm going to do this now before i uh <laughs> hit n knives against each other this particular one i've had for almost a year actually i've had it a year wow um the micarta that i've done the acid etch and stone wash on the action just, mmm. And that's on their factory caged ceramic bearings. Still, I can shake it shut, whereas I cannot do that with the brass. So the answer, you guessed it. I am going to be throwing a set of, let's see if I can get it to focus, skiff bearings on the Elementum with the brass scales. And honestly, I'm just curious if it's going to make a difference. That's all I really want to know. Let's take all this stuff over to the table, get the install going, come back and get some final impressions. All right, guys, I have everything set up here. I went ahead and just removed the pocket clip to save a little bit of time. You're going to need a T8 for all of the hardware to remove the scales and get down into the bearings. Um, and as you can see, I'm giving you one more view to let you know that this is not currently fall shut with the current setup. And I did check the tension and it's as loose as I can get it without taking uh, the elementum and making it off center. So let's go ahead and get into it. These are the Rocket Glide Skiff 5 millimeter. 1 16th 11 ball count so in case you're wondering uh which ones you would need if you're looking at this for the elementum those are it right there and i will zoom in so that you can get a good look at that as well so let's go ahead and get into it don't want to take up too much of your time uh, i only ha i have all of the bits and tools that i use are linked in the description down below i will also link the skiff down below and the lubes and everything that i'm using are all going to be linked below including the elementum in case you're interested in the knife um, so i go ahead and get the lock out and i'm going to go ahead and remove all of the hardware on the non-show side which is opposite of the Civivi logo there and I will not time lapse this for you guys in case you know you can see it raw in case you need to see this if you're not familiar I really you know take for granted that some folks might actually be tuning in and want to just see the whole process uh, all done from beginning to end sorry concentrating there because i really don't want to scratch up my scales now i did notice when i took the um pocket clip off they they have lubed around the brass anywhere that any other metal contacts so it, this is probably going to be one of the only instances where i tell you to leave that lube there i think that's just a measure of preventive rust preventive um damage to the the brass scales whoa that came out really fast so the the unusual thing about the factory caged bearings let me move that out the way i don't want to lose that that is your stop pin and that came out when i uh lifted up on there so what you'll notice here is these caged bearings and which is why it's a really good upgrade. I'll zoom in so you can see that. On this side, you'll notice that they are flush, and this is what's sitting flush to the steel side of the liner, but on the actual blade side, they actually aren't sitting flush. It's actually sitting on this kind of, I don't know, I would call it a tub shape. Sorry, it's really hard to handle it with such big hands. But it's kind of tub shaped so 
what ends up happening is any kind of dirt, debris, or anything like that ends up getting caught up in these bearings, which is why this is another popular upgrade. But the uh, the skiffs, by comparison, probably should have started there, right? Getting these out. <laughs> My hands have a little bit of oil on it now. Let me get in here. Oh, yeah. And these come oiled. You can't, I don't know if you can, if it translates in the camera through the package, but you can kind of see these actually have more concentrated balls on them. Why is this so hard? That's what she said. Oh my God, what am I saying? <laughs> Inside of the brass. So this is brass. Um, this looks like bronze, the phosphor bronze, which is another reason why you might want to upgrade these. So let's go ahead and take the other side out. Yay, it fell out. Let me set this aside. The last thing I want to do is lose that. Um, these came lubed already. I'm not going to throw any additional lube on there. Just trying to feel the difference. I mean, those ceramic bearings move pretty well. Let's go ahead and get that on there. Nice tight fit. It does sit up a little bit more, but it's not, it's not tremendous as far as how it feels like it sits up on the knife and i did look up online to see if these fit so we'll find out together if they really do truly fit i am going to store the other ceramic um caged bearings that came with the knife in here i don't want them rusting out if they sit and don't want to lose them <laughs> Not that anything's going anywhere, so this all should go back together really, really, really smooth. So I'll set those aside. Let's go ahead and get the knife back over in position. There you go. Get your other bearings, which are, they have plenty of lube on them. You shouldn't need to mess with them. Um, I guess they store them like that so they don't get damaged. Really, really snug fit there. Just in case you're wondering how they fit, it's definitely snug. We'll go ahead and drop that back on. Try not to let my fingers get too greasy because what I don't want to happen is for something to slip out. So I'm going to grab the T8. I'm going to leave the lube that was on there on there. Woo. That thing is slick. And you know what I forgot to do? forgot to get my... Lock tight out there so that it doesn't fall off later. Um, it's a really short screw, so what I what I try to do, since my hands are so big and I can't get in there, I try to just hold it on and then just gently kind of turn it and catch a little bit on the corners and hoping that when I go to thread it in, ooh, that's a little much, let me put some of that back. <laughs> try to catch it on the corners so that when it goes into the thread, and I'm sorry if I'm blocking. I think I'm blocking a little bit, but let me get this started and then I'll move it into position so that you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so I just kind of get it a little tight to get it going. And then I'll go ahead and drop this down on. The, uh, the magnet on this Kershaw tool is actually quite nice. It does a good job kind of holding the screw on there doesn't let it fall off once you get it you know in position it does a really got a uh, really good job holding it in there so we'll get these uh, body screws started be really careful not to cross thread I could feel like that didn't catch that right so I backed up a little bit all right let's check the centering first okay it needs to be tightened up a lot all right so need to back it off just a touch just a touch all right so i'll zoom in there that should be perfectly centered whoa so still not drop shut but whoa i can tell a difference that thing shoots out of there let's check that centering up again because i did loosen it up i didn't give the lock tight a whole lot of time and the bad thing about me being drawn to these dark coated blades and darker materials um, it does present a little bit of a challenge for the camera to pick it up that's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it with this camera but 
definitely I noticed immediately, oh, it is starting to uh, fall shut a little bit more than it did with the factory bearings, but uh, let's check that lockup. Oh yeah, the lockup is really nice. And on the blade itself, still sitting at 40%, mm, 40% lockup there, I think. Hopefully you're able to see that. I'll zoom in there as well. The action is uh, significantly different. I can definitely tell this thing wants to just rock it out. Um, let me have my cloth try to clean the blade up here a little bit, guys. <laughs> got oil on my fingers from handling everything um, and again this is one of the only instances where I would where I would encourage you to uh, use a little bit more oil for your brass and copper materials against the actual metals because that's just going to prevent you know any kind of adherence to the metal itself any rust so that if moisture gets down in there they're not going to get stuck together really just a huge difference wow on the action itself i was hoping it would be drop shut kind of like <clears throat> my micarta variant and my micarta variant is one of the reasons i need to turn this light down it's super bright i'm sorry guys i'm hoping when i turn it down yeah there you go maybe that's what i had going on i had the light on way too bright camera couldn't pick everything up see how that it's not drop shut, but it will shake shut a whole lot easier uh, than the brass version. So let me, now that I have that here, you can see the blade centering a whole lot easier. Uh, and then the action, wow. Not quite as good as the other one, but it is an improvement from the, the factory for sure. So again, these are the, um, these are the rocket glide rings. They have ceramic bearings coated in phosphor bronze and they have more bearings on there which helps with the lockup and the action is just, I noticed that immediately. Now I did do this on the um, ZT with the tacos and I did notice a slight improvement. The factory bearings were very well tuned um, and quite large but what I noticed more so was that the blade lockup itself was it felt much more stiff that's what she said <laughs> there was just a tiny hint of movement on the zt before um but there was not on the elementum and i i'm guessing because that's smaller but man that thing just flies out of there so if you're looking at skiffs i mean they're fairly affordable and, uh, you know, at least on the two knives that I've seen so far that I have them, the other one being my smock, my schmock, my smock, um, this one here, whew, what a, this was a big old difference. <laughs> I mean, dang, I'm sorry, I'm not pushing the button all the way in. There we go. It was getting caught up on that detent ball <laughs> i mean that's kind of crazy i wasn't expecting that and i was hoping for something kind of similar here but that might be kind of the yeah see it might be the detent on the liner lock that's kind of preventing that from falling shut so let me see you know that's something i didn't take into consideration what the lockup looks like for on these two they're the same. The lockup is the same. It could just be that this particular steel liner, for whatever reason, it might just be a little bit stronger. Well, there you go. Um, skiff bearings reviewed, installed. Thumbs up for me. Links down in the description. If you enjoyed the video, if it helped you, leaving a like helps the channel. If you enjoy the content, consider subscribing, turning on your notifications so you don't miss future content. I appreciate you guys tuning in and all the support. Hope you have a wonderful week. Peace.